الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله a nice uh, relevant comment and question was mentioned by one of our brothers may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us in him and guide us and guide him ameen ya rabbil alameen he said assalamu alaykum barakallahu fikum akhi kareem do you think the term salafia has been so overcome by and associated with the things you talk about in this video to the point that perhaps its use is no longer effective since it's been so tainted what you describe as true salafia seems to be more of a minority regarding those who use the label nowadays from my experience at least allahu alam i'd like to hear your take on it because you seem to continuously use the term in trying to fix these issues but perhaps it's time to move on to a different descriptive term that hasn't been tainted jazakallah khairan wa iyakum and so first I i'd like to say that these mustalahat these terminologies that they have a basis in the shara they have a basis from adilla from statements coming from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the salaf of this ummah and these are terms adopted by ulama of ahl sunnah and so first and foremost i would say as far as usages of term terminologies that those would be issues that are determined by ahl al-fiqh fi din meaning the ulama and especially the major scholars so as long as many of the ulama of ahl al-sunnah use this terminology and refer to it in light of what the salaf used to do as far as ahl athar ahl hadith ahl sunnah ahl sunnati wal jamaa and other terminologies that have been used throughout the history of islam then the salaf al salih uh, firqat al najiyah all of these terminologies and these mustalahat the ahl sunnah has derived and that's mustanad al dalil that it comes from evidences from a book in the sunnah and the ijma of ahl sunnah that they these terminologies have relevance perhaps in the future there will come a time when the ulama of that time will have another terminology or wasf that they believe is uh more appropriate as a descriptive for their uh for describing them or describing uh what's going on but as far as us as to lay uh tawail al-ilm you know as as small uh students of knowledge then i don't think that would be appropriate for us to take up that call however would that be in the case as in my experience with a lot of the ulama or with some of the ulama that i've studied with who have mentioned you know that of course all of these issues uh and issues of ijtihadat and require fiqh fi din so meaning one example that i've heard uh from sheikh abd razak al badr hafizallahu ta'ala and i can also recall abu salal al afghani mentioning a, a a story and i've heard this from various ulama mentioning about using the term salafi uh one one situation is for example which is relevant is uh in in a particular i i think this took place in Pakistan or it was Afghanistan I and mean, it was a jamaa that was their their scholar there would always get on the minbar and curse uh, Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab and Wahhabia or what have you and this was his regular habit and then one of the maybe students of knowledge who had returned or 
something. He came to that sheikh one day. He said, Sheikh, I have a book. And he took off the cover. He tore off the, the cover. And it was the Kitab al by Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. And he said, Sheikh, I have a book. Uh, you know, I just wanted you to, to, to go through and, you know, help us to, so that way we know, you know, what's true and what's false. And as we know, Kitab al and many of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab's books were very uh, written a lot of times, especially Kitab al Tawheed is, uh, you know, he'll have a maybe a chapter heading and then Ayat, Qur'aniya, and then Hadith Nabawiya and maybe some Aqwal of the Salaf uh, regarding some Masail. And so he, he brought this to this sheikh or this imam and to make a long story short that the imam you know, said that this was a very beneficial book. Is this Bukhari? What is this? And then uh, I think he may have clarified that this is Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab, the one you're speaking about all the time. And I've heard this story and stories similar to this on more than one occasion, and those are two Mashaikh that I directly heard it from. Uh, and so the point being is that there is hikmah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to give uh, da'wah with hikmah, wa mo'idah, uh, and 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 to argue with them with that which is better, you know. And so, with that being the case, is that from fiqh fi deen is that not always that you have to cram down people's throat and say, you know, Salafi, Salafi, and especially if you're dealing with a non Salafi community and you're dealing with just general Muslims who the most important thing is that they want the truth, it may not be beneficial to necessarily say that your Salafi or, you know, to uh, use the terminology and, and, and be excessive in, in its usage. So I think that really comes down to fiqh fi deen. And, you know, when it's appropriate and when not. And another example that I can think of, even though some of the people may dislike it, but I what I see in the mind limited, and I'm here in Saudi Arabia, I'm not in America, but what I see from uh, some of our du'at, uh, like Sheikh Tahir and Sheikh Mufti and I, I think a lot of the other brothers in the Muslim Family Center, uh, Sajid, um, uh, Abu Sajid, I believe, and some of the other brothers who are doing some khayr there in the East Coast from Ahl Sunnah is that they're, you know, their communities, they're dealing with various communities and they are teaching to the level of the people. Because again, that's the whole point, da'wah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you want to be a source of khayr. So, Depending on who your audience, if you have an audience that is understanding, uh, you know, that un understands a lot of principles of Salafiyya or they've been introduced to the Dawah and they know uh, uh, and are more familiar and familiar with scholars, then in that community it would be more appropriate. You might use that terminology more and you might be more outward in using the terminology. The important thing is to teach the people the uh, creed and methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. But in a community where the people don't know, you're going to teach to their level and you're going to use the tools and use and, and use the fiqh and the wisdom in order to articulate that message so that those people can be brought up and raised in their deen because that's what Dawata Salafiyya is. And so my usage of the term uh and why I feel it is relevant, because there has been uh, a lot of people, a lot of hijacking of the term. So you have people now who say they're Salafi Jihadi, and probably some who don't say they're Salafi Takfiri, but in fact they may be Takfiri. And you have those who, uh, you know, uh, claim Salafi, and as I've mentioned countless times, as the ulama mentioned the principle of Ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musamiyat, that the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name or not in its claim. And so you have many people who've been claiming Salafi for years and years and years and propagating false principles in the name of Salafi. So it's very important to defend Salafi and purify Salafi. Until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in essence. That we don't just say, another example, looking at uh, how many times have we heard conferences of, of pure Sufis. Like, 
some of the most extreme that worship graves and uh, make tawaf around graves and slaughter animals to the dead and say that they're making tawassal to the, um, uh, you know, uh, tawassal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but through the dead or through the essence of the dead and all of these kind of twisted arguments which have nothing to do and we know are shirkiyat. But they call themselves Ahl Sunnah. And they have gatherings like in Chechnya and around the world and say the gathering of scholars of Ahl Sunnah to denounce Wahhabiyyah, to denounce this, to denounce Salafiyya, to denounce all of these kind of things. So many people take names and claims, but that doesn't mean we need to run every time someone makes a claim. And even if it's Kathir, even if it's many, to change the name. No, but in fact, it's very important that our duty is to continue to strive our best to articulate things based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, with the understanding of the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'anu Majma'in. So that's very important. And what we have seen is a lot of people, as I said, making false principles, especially some du'at and students of knowledge. And this is not just an issue unique to the West. This is everywhere. And I've traveled, uh, I've seen it in many countries, so, uh, several African countries, definitely in many Arab countries, you know, Indonesia, uh, you know, it's it, the same issues plague around the world, whether you're in Sweden, whether you're in Amsterdam, whether you're in Seattle, Washington, unfortunately, these same uh, issues and some of these tafarraq, but every place does have their own unique characteristics. But the point is, is some of these sicknesses and some of these uh, false principles, which often are the result of blind following and often are the result of ignorance and so on and so forth that they have been articulated and codified into newly invented matters, newly invented principles that they don't have a real sell-up for. They don't have a real sell-up for what they're saying. So there's no reason that we should give that up. And I've spoken to many of my, even some of my colleagues that are beloved to me who often say, make uh, claims and say, you know, so-and-so is uh, a balanced Salafi. And even that, I don't necessarily uh, feel comfortable with using that term. I just say so-and-so Salafi. Or if someone says, I think you're a balanced Salafi. So no, I'm, inshallah ta'ala, I'm Salafi, uh, just practicing what we're supposed to do. You know, be, just because someone else who claims Salafi, you know, totally not just not only practices horrible manners, but actually belittles having good manners, that doesn't mean uh, that that is, you know, that we shouldn't exalt those principles, that we exalt those principles because they're what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam exhibited. They are Salafiyyah. We can't, Salafiyyah does not go against the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so what I believe is also even some du'at in their own backlash against Salafiyyah and in denouncing Salafiyyah, some that were Salafi before, that they attack Salafiyyah and, and one example is Yasser Qadi and others uh, and some others who are kind of going on that same path to really distance himself from Salafiyyah, that I believe that they really truly had a misunderstanding of Salafiyyah, really, no matter how much they studied and how many PhDs they got from such and such place or a master's or a, uh, a bachelor's or whatever they, they have, have attained, that really there's some essence of the da'wah that they misunderstood. And I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from having the limited time that I had with Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al wadii and it's articulated in his beautiful statement and you saw it in his life and that inspired me. Uh, and it still inspires me, as he said, Dawa to Ahl Sunnah, Dawa to Nila Kitabi La, Min Kitabi, Min Kitabi La, Ila Kitabi La, Women Sunnati Rasulilahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wala Alaihi Wasallam, Ila Sunnati Rasulilahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wala Alaihi Wasallam. So, the Dawa to Ahl Sunnah, it's the Dawa to the Book of Allah, uh, from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah. And from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, letting us know that these principles, these are principles are above us. You know, these are, this is, this is, and this, this is bringing you back to ikhlas. And in fact, in that statement is even those two shurut uh, al-amal, you can find them right there. Uh, that imam was, uh, was very profound. And what are the shurut al-amal? What are the conditions for having our deeds uh, accepted 
they are ikhlas wa mutaba that sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mutaba following the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so if we bring the da'wah back i mean as many of our ulama are doing they've been doing it there are many but unfortunately a lot of times we take some bad examples and we take with the du'at some du'at some du'at because there's so many people that are of da'wah to salafiyah that we I, I would beg to differ a bit with your statement that yes, there is there are those kathir, there are a lot misrepresenting, but there's still many who are representing. There are many that are representing, they just, maybe others are trying to take them off the sunnah. That's about it. But I've known many, and I can say hundreds, if not more, that, uh, you know, that are, some of them are callers to Allah, and some of them, they, you know, they, that they, that they realize, and they are going back, and they're trying to reform their communities based on the book, and based on the sunnah, and based on the madhab of the salaf. So that's a little bit of my take on this matter, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.